Journalists, we do not want to become part of the story. We don't want to interfere with the story, but there are times when we're investigating a story and things happen. That said, let me take you back about 24 hours. Yesterday, News for Jack's photojournalist Riley Story and reporter Aaron Farrar were in Middleburg doing a story about two Clay County girls who were reported missing. Sisters, as a matter of fact. They just finished their live shot, went back into the news van to regroup. About 15 minutes later, Aaron looked up and saw a young girl walking through the parking lot. She looked rather familiar. How familiar? Familiar enough that Riley jumped out of the news van. I'm going to let Riley pick up the story from there, and he joins us live via Zoom this morning, which, by the way, I greatly appreciate, be, appreciate because this is your time. So uh, you and Aaron are in the van and look up, and I'm going to let you take it from there. Yeah, Bruce, good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Um, Aaron and I were sitting in the van, like you said, uh, just regrouping and going over some notes after our first live shot. And uh, Aaron looks up and says, uh, I think that's one of the missing girls. And I said, are you sure? I hadn't seen pictures of them yet in that morning. And uh, he goes, yes, that's one of the missing girls. And I said, okay, well then call 911. Uh, I'm gonna go after her. So I jumped out and ran up to her. I said, uh, hey, I'm with the news. My name's Riley. We're covering a story of a missing girl. And uh, are you one of the missing girls? They were two sisters, a 13 and a 12 year old. And uh, at first she just looked at me. She was very quiet. And uh, then she said, uh, I just said again, are you one girl's name or the other girl's name? And she said one of those names. And I said, okay, great. Well, uh, well, you're missing. I said, do you know where your sister is? And she wouldn't answer at first. Like I said, she was very quiet. And I said, hey, you don't have to tell me where your sister is. I understand. But can you just tell me if you actually know where she is and is she safe? And she said, yes, I know where my sister is and she's safe. And uh, so from there, she didn't want to stop walking. So I just walked with her um, a couple of businesses down from where we were. And she walked into a gas station. So I let the clerk know, hey, that's a missing girl. Please keep an eye on her. I'm going to go outside and call the police. So um, then I called the police just to update our location. And they showed up about five minutes later. And uh, thankfully, we had a happy ending. A few hours after that, they ended up finding her sister safely as well. And your whole goal was just to make sure that she was safe and stayed safe until deputies could get there. Absolutely. Uh, this was a 12 year old girl that was just walking around at about 7.15 in the morning is when we uh, found her 24 hours ago, really, from right now. And uh, people were out and about. These were some busy businesses, uh, a Dunkin Donuts, a Waffle House, places people like to go in the morning. So it was just really important to see, knowing that this girl's 12 years old, she, she didn't need to be outside walking around by herself, especially who knows the intentions of any adult out there. I, I work in news, so unfortunately I see the worst of the worst. So it was important to have continuous eyes on her until the police officers could get there and take over. Did you ever get the backstory about why the girls were reported missing in the first place? No, we really don't, but this was an interesting one um, because the 13-year-old went missing Saturday at around 2 p.m. Uh, is when she was reported missing, but then the 12-year-old was reported missing Saturday around 11 p.m., so it was a nine-hour difference. That was something Aaron and I found odd, and then they were found in two different places as well. So this was an interesting case. You know, I, I know there's been little reaction from the sheriff's department, although they did uh, apparently or was overheard by somebody else who was covering the story from another station that, hey, it was somebody from the media that helped find them. I started off saying that we don't like to become a, a part of the story. I, I assume no regrets here in this case because it meant making sure that a kid was safe. Absolutely. And that's rule number one is don't become part of the story. We're a very safety focused news station, thankfully. So anytime I go to a crime scene or a fire or something to that nature, it's always best that we stand back, let the first responders do what they do best while we just get to observe what's happening and then report to the city our findings. Uh, so this was a bit of an interesting case. The police officers were actually in the same area as Aaron and I probably five to 10 minutes before we saw the missing girl, uh, they had all gone out, presumably to continue searching for her. So we just happened to be the ones to see her. So then again, we called them and let them take over and do what they do best. And, and I want everybody who's watching right now to know that Riley is as good and professional as they come. And a lot of times you see the reporters on the screen, but there are photojournalists who work with us. They put the pictures together with the stories we tell, and we couldn't do our jobs without them. Riley, hey, thanks for getting up early. Thanks, and Bruce. Spending some time with us. Have a great day. You too.